Hi, I'm Joe Jacobson at Wickham Wanderers and you're listening to Wickham Sound. The Wickham Wanderers Show. Welcome to this week's edition of the Wickham Wanderers Show on the eve of the Wickham Wanderers Ex-Players Association annual dinner. It's the 13th one. Although, as Anna Hutchinson explained last week, I think that the 12th was missing or something. Anyway, uh, <laughs> there's definitely one tomorrow. Very much looking forward to that. Uh, one of those attending will be speaking to us uh, in around 20 minutes time. Uh, he was an integral part of that team which uh, did the double, got promoted to the Football League in 1993. No, I don't think I will say who it is. No. You might have heard earlier. We did mention it. But uh, yes, uh, a chat with him uh, coming up very, very soon as well. Uh, also, we'll hear from the manager, Matt Bloomfield, who also will be at Adams Park tomorrow evening for the aforementioned event. And uh, he missed last year's uh, dinner. He was presented with an award, but Richard Dobson accepted it on his behalf uh, because he was, he was manager of Colchester at the time and was a bit busy with that. But uh, this year, he's manager at Wickham. Hopefully next year, be manager at Wickham as well. And for, for many more years to come, uh, we'll hear from him building up to the visit of Reading on Saturday. Uh, much looking forward to uh, the atmosphere at Adams Park as well. The away end sold out. Uh, when last I heard, there aren't too many uh, spaces left in the terrace either. Uh, I believe the car park, the much, um, <laughs> much uh, celebrated car park, not too much in the way of uh, space there either. So uh, that should be a good one on Saturday. I uh, hope you enjoy that game. Uh, bottom of League One, which uh, isn't something you should be able to say very often, I don't think, about Reading. But uh, that's their current league position. Uh, we'll be building up to that uh, a little later on at this hour as well. We'll also hear from Maddie Armstrong, who plays for Wickham Wanderers Women. She's only 17, has worked her way up from the under-23s, and since uh, former captain Cara Howes left, has uh, occupied the left-back spot. But she has, as we'll hear later, played in other positions as well. Quite a few. <laughs> Most of them, it's fair to say. She's played in most positions. But, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll find out some other uh, bits about uh, how her career is going after she arrived at the club as well. But first, a welcome return to Phil, who, uh, well, as you know, wasn't with us last week. I missed the game. Uh, well, it was a, a late change, wasn't it? So when the international break got confirmed, I booked some flights. I was out of here, so just visiting family. But, um, but yeah, so I, I missed the game. But I think nearly my first game I've missed in nearly two years. But pleasing for you to see, obviously, that the club do, do well in this competition and, and uh, hopefully get a, get a good draw tomorrow. Yeah, it's uh, a fantastic, you know, for the younger players. I know it's a much maligned competition with the fans and, and the media, and I've been guilty of this in the past as well, can poke fun at this competition because of, of the lack of interest in it from a fan's perspective in the early rounds. But let's not forget this finishes at Wembley, and I'll certainly be at Wembley if we get there. For the players that have had the opportunity, let's look at Jasper Pattenden. He's the perfect case study for this competition. A player desperate for first team minutes, working his socks off week in, week out of the training ground. He got that 90 minutes in the first game in this tournament. Injuries uh, happened in that position and it meant that he was ready and the gaffer had a really good look at him and he's had a really good run now. He's got like 10 appearances under his belt and that's come from this competition. Injured players, Joe Jacobson, Jack Grimmer, players that at the other end of their careers in, in terms of JJ and Jackson experienced player but needed that competitive football to get minutes to get themselves ready for the when they're needed in the league after having lengthy absences these are big big opportunities for these players um, so yeah this tournament plays its part you know and and the prize money you know Wickham have won three games that's £30,000 you know that's not to be sneezed at for us um, the opportunity to progress I think we've got a fair chance of getting an under-21 team. They're finding their feet at this level now after a few seasons of uh, interesting results. Um, So it's not going to be an easy game, but it's an opportunity for for more prize money, um, more interest, more minutes, more opportunities for players who haven't been getting league action. So yeah, I think it's been a positive experience, this competition so far. And also the players should really reap the rewards of having the game moved from the Tuesday to the Saturday. Yeah, you know, and I think, again, that, that shows you that the lack of fan interest enabled that to happen. And I think actually more fans went on the Saturday than probably would have done on a Tuesday night for a game that was essentially a dead rubber. But uh, it meant that Wickham could top the league. And and here we are now. Wickham have got three clean sheets, 3-1-0 wins, playing against Reading, who I think have got the best record in the EFL trophy this season in terms of their results and goals scored. But they're doing terribly in the league. So um, they're talking about how they can get their cup form into into the league. But I think, you know, the greatest deal of respect, very different levels of competition between League One and the EFL Trophy. I think a lot of fans are getting excited about Saturday as well, just partly because it's due to the, the geographical closeness of the two teams, but obviously also because the Reading were, were, were not so long ago doing so much better. 
Yeah, you know, this is a team that's been in the Premier League. They're a really well supported club. Um, they're in a real mess, aren't they? Um, and it's being sorted out as we speak. And you know, and you hope for the for the sake of football that they they get through it and and they they find an even keel and whatever. Uh, but on the pitch, I hope their misery continues on Saturday. I hope they get absolutely stuffed. And the Wickham fans who work with Reading fans, there will be lots of them because of the geographical nature of it. Um, I hope they've got the bragging rights come Monday because you know this is what it's all about. Now Wickham need three points in the league uh, after some good performances that haven't probably produced the points that we deserved, but it's a results business and we're after the three points. So, you know, sympathies for Reading will have to be parked until next week. There should be a great atmosphere at the ground. Fantastic. Sold out away in the Reading, great supported club. They travel in good numbers and ain't got to travel very far, have they? So, um, so yeah, it should be a good atmosphere and fingers crossed the Wickham public come out in their numbers as well and, and make some noise. And also, just three points will will take them to within a, just a couple of points on the playoffs, really. So, it's, you, the, in, in terms of the, the league position, would look a lot better as well. Absolutely, it's very tight, isn't it? It always is in League One. Um, if you can get two or three results strung together, you can really improve your league position no end. Um, but look, we're still in that stage of the season where you can't you can't ruin your season, you can't sort of win anything at this point. But you know, if you can get a decent run together, you can make sure in a decent position. Uh, when we turn for home uh, in January uh, and then that's when it really starts to matter. And does it feel like as well this has got sort of the start of quite a real busy and key uh, run of results, uh, yeah, games? Yeah, well, hopefully some key results as well. Um, yeah, Reading, Barnsley, two big games. Uh, uh, Barnsley having their own issues this week as well. Um, then it's the FA Cup, which, you know, I think we're all talking about league positions and stuff, but I know a lot of fans really really want a decent cup run and we've got a home tie against Morecambe another club who are in a bit of turmoil at the moment having lost their manager Uh, so you know on paper a great opportunity to progress we know it'll be a tough game it always is against Morecambe but yeah you know in two three weeks time we could be looking at a team who are progressing in two cups doing well in the league Um, you know it's all there to play for but with that becomes a relentless fixture schedule and you know it's it's hard going um, but hopefully this week, with the, the moving of that fixture last Saturday, um, hopefully has given the, them enough time to recover and get enough energy in the tank to attack these run this run of games into Christmas, which itself is a, a challenging period of resu- uh, of games too. Uh, lots to look forward to. Enjoy the game. I will do. Great chatting to Phil uh, a little earlier on today at the training ground, which you might have heard, or it sounded a bit like it was in his car with a massive bass booster in. Uh, Luke's with us as well. Um, Phil, of course, who you can catch on Ringing the Blues and uh, Pretty Match Drills as well. Yeah, it's a good one this week, Pretty Match Drills. Apparently I'm in the background. You are in the background, so yeah. Spot Colin. You don't win anything, <laughs> but you might do. Yeah. yeah. Looking lost or something. The sun was very low in, in my defence. Yeah, which apparently means you just ignored me. Yes. Yeah. Way of covering that up. Um, <laughs> the low sun. The sun was now. Um, yes. Uh, so, yes, brilliant to chat to Phil and uh, lots going on. Uh, we, we've got sort of, I guess, a staggered notice board this week. We can give you uh, yeah. drip, drip feeds. Part notice one of the, uh, of the notice board. Oh, nice. Thank you very much. I found the sound effects. It's very low tech, this notice <laughs> It's board. good, isn't it? Uh, Chairboy Star. Uh, and rapidly fan favourite Luke Leahy uh, has invited the South Central Ambulance Charity to hold a collection at Adams Park ahead of Saturday's League One fixture against Reading as a gesture of his and Brandon's appreciation for their help and support throughout their injury treatment uh, in the recent game against Stevenage. Um, the number 10 has donated a shirt signed by the squad for the charity to raffle off. Uh, and would you like to know how you can enter? I would, please do. I'm going to do this live right now oh you're going to uh, enter live I'm going to enter live not that I can win but I'm going to tell you how to do it so you pick up your phone pick up my phone good right step one you type in uh, Wickham in capitals we, I think not in real time no uh, it's in capitals on, on the website so I'm guessing Wickham in capitals uh, and you send that to 70215 that's 70215 you're playing along at home Okay, exactly. Uh, then you'll get a message and you will then be able to uh, respond with either 1, 5 and 10 as a donation to Self Central uh, Ambulance. Uh, each £1 donation counts uh, as one entry and the raffle closes at 3.30 on Saturday. Uh, at that point, the charity will randomly select a winner who will be announced at half time. Exciting. I'm glad you've taken over the Andy Peters role as well. Though. Yeah, I know. It's good. Not as good as you and Andy, but there you go. <laughs> uh, if you want to find out more details about that, uh, Wickham Wanderers' website is www.fc.com. 
dot com. Obviously, a really good cause. Obviously, fantastic that uh, uh, Luke's feeling better. It was great to see him at Adams Park on on Saturday as well. Yeah, and uh, that was very nice as well because obviously everyone was very very worried with watching what was happened if you were watching it in the in the stadium or on Wanderers TV. Uh, but then there was uh, lots of talk about him in the week, and then there was a rumours going around that he'd arrived at Adams Park and then he was there. So it was very nice. Got a little wave from him afterwards. It was nice. Fantastic. Hope to see him on the pitch, uh, obviously, when he's ready. And a brilliant opportunity, as Luke mentioned on Saturday, to help raise funds for the South Central Ambulance as well. We'll get manager Matt Bloomfield's thoughts on that a bit later on as well. Uh, you've got some corporate news as well. Uh, in uh, corporate news, which... Have you got any sound effects for that? Uh, I mean, this would work again. Yeah, yeah. That kind of works. Uh, Wickham Wanderers commercial team... Uh, our warmly welcome guest to the Christmas Business Networking event. It is getting colder. It is. At Adams Park on Wednesday, the 6th of December, uh, between 3 and 5 p.m. Uh, guests will be able to enjoy mince pies, mulled wine, tea and coffees, uh, and you can meet some of the commercial boys from the Chair Boys team uh, and obviously meet uh, local-minded business representatives as well. Uh, if you want to find out more details, again, Wickham Wanderers' website uh, or you can email callum.king at wwfc.com and there may be also a surprise. Ooh. Not if you email Callum at the event. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone that emails Callum will get a surprise. Please Guaranteed. do that. If someone just email Callum and just yeah, put in, yeah. just put surprise. That <laughs> make my life very happy. Also, not not wanting to blow our own trumpet. You... <laughs> I was almost thinking you're going to produce yeah, a trumpet sound effect, but no, you've just done it yourself. Excellent. Uh, but on the 9th of December, something a bit special is happening at Adams Park as well. Oh, would I like to tease something for the 9th of December? Yes, yes I would. Yes. At uh, 9th of December, Wickham Sound will be celebrating its 10th anniversary uh, since our first broadcast uh, back in 2013 from uh, the Oxcon Shopping Centre. Uh, and this Saturday, which is two weeks before that game, uh, the first part of the celebrations will begin. Ooh. And it's something for everyone in the community to get involved with. Ooh. Slash also fundraise for Wickham Sound. What do points mean? Uh, possibly prizes, Colin. <laughs> possibly prizes. <laughs> something else to look forward to there as well. So yeah, December, we were um, speaking to Phil obviously as well, and, the, and we'll hear from the manager a bit later on as well, but there's, there's quite a run of games coming up. Yeah, it seems to be that it was nothing, and then everything is sort of... And I think the fact that we had the game on Saturday as well, um, which, uh, as you'll hear a little bit later on, was all Matt Bloomfield's idea, um, was... I think it was a great idea because it's just given them that extra couple of days of looking ahead to Saturday, not having to worry about Tuesday night playing. It gave some fans probably more of a chance to go and watch the game on Saturday than probably on a Tuesday evening as well. Um, so, yeah, there's a lot lot of games coming up, but I think I don't think that's a bad thing either, especially with the injuries as well. I think it's going to give it a little bit of um, motivation and momentum and other words beginning with them as well. And also for such people like Lyle Taylor as well, who's only just coming into the team, he's going to get a, a quick... Uh, introduction to the team and obviously meet the new players and, and get his uh, match time up as well very good point and I imagine as well thank you <laughs> when you're up at the training ground it must be so nice for, for players returning from international duty as well and how they're sort of welcomed mm. back and yeah, I had a very awkward uh, exchange with uh, TJ earlier uh, I didn't know if we were going for a handshake fist bump so we sort of did the both of them at the same time oh nice but it was nice to see TJ uh, obviously, Dale Taylor's back as well. Joe Lowe with his sausage roll um, it was back as well. Very happy with his with his goal. And Killian as well got his, was it first goal? Yes. Yeah. Well done to him. In other An news, excellent goal. you just reminded me, um, my guitar teacher. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I don't know where this is going, but go on. Exactly. Was recently at a cafe in Lane End. Okay. And he saw a Wickham Wanderers player, ah. I quote, who had a foreign accent. Nice. I, I've deduced this was TJ. Ah, okay. Apparently he spends a lot of time there. Very nice. In the cafe in Lane End. Uh, if you want to see TJ, then you know where to find him. About 11 o'clock, apparently. No, oh, very nice. Really? Well, You're not th- training? No, that can't be right. That can't be right. <laughs> he must be training then. Uh, perhaps it was later in the afternoon. Then. Okay. Who knows? Yeah. A Wicked Wanderers player was somewhere in the local area. Yeah. Yeah. There can't be too many cafes in Lane End, can there? <laughs> no, I don't know. Maybe there are. Possibly. Uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll try them all till we get there. I don't think... I think you said 11. Perhaps not. That's, that is when they're training, isn't it? Maybe it was on one of the day off. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Find other Wicked Wanderers players in cafes around High Wicked. I was going to say we should make that a feature, shouldn't we? Yeah, I think uh, there's a, there are some favourite. Actually, talking of food, oh, this has been an this insider is a good. Tip, yeah. This is a, a nice insider bit. When it's anyone's birthday, be it player or staff, uh, sweeter foods are brought to the training ground. Oh, be it cake or uh, branded donuts. Um, Luke Leahy's birthday was earlier in the week. There seems to be a run of birthdays this week, actually. Uh, but Luke Leahy brought his sweet treats in today. And you're right there. Uh, and he he had an, an excellent choice of cakes this week. Victoria Sponge. There was some amazing. I don't know who makes the flapjack, but it's also incredible as well. 
Wow. There was, a, there was obviously healthier food as well available at the training ground. So I think you were going to say other places around you can spot players. Do, do oh, no, I've, I was just going, I just remembered about the cake Any that I had earlier. Any haunts doubts of players where you can spot players? No, just everywhere. I know right? Bob saw um, one in Sainsbury's. Though. Oh, yeah, they, yeah. There's a lot of, lot of places. Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> you never know where a chairboy's player <laughs> might just jump and appear of it on you. More on that in future weeks. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> when we've prepared it better. Yes. I'll get a map. Uh, part two of the Wickham Water Show, next. Online, on Radio Player, and on 106.6 FM. This is Wickham Sound. Tuesday evenings from 7. Hello, Phil here from Wickham Wanderers, host of Ringing the Blues, which you can listen to right here on Wickham Sound every Tuesday from 7 to 8. We'll have all the action from the game at the weekend, plus a whole host of players and guests associated with the club, plus our weekly feature, Till Death Us Do Part, where Wickham fans remember their favourite memories. Only on Wickham Sound, 7 to 8. The Wickham Wanderers Show, Thursdays from 7. Still to come on this week's edition of the Wickham Wanderer Show, uh, we'll hear from manager Matt Bloomfield talking at uh, this afternoon's press session at the training ground as we look ahead to the visit of Reading on Saturday. As mentioned, the away end uh, is sold out. I'm fairly confident as well that uh, the home end won't have too many spaces when it comes to uh, kickoff uh, as well. We'll catch up with Maddie Armstrong too, who is a Wickham Wanderers women left back although she, she has occupied other positions as well, but uh, currently uh, left back, who knows, by uh, later in the season, uh, where she'll be playing. But first, we mentioned a little earlier on that it's the Wickham Wanderers Ex-Players Association annual dinner uh, tomorrow evening, and uh, one person who'll be there, I'm very pleased to say we can uh, speak to, It's uh, we heard a little, late, a little earlier on uh, in the season, a couple of weeks back, from Kim Casey. Uh, no, we've not got him back. Uh, he uh, has described uh, our guest uh, this week as uh, the best goalkeeper he's seen in his career and also an outstanding guy, which is a lot to live up to. But I'm very excited to uh, uh, introduce and uh, welcome to the show, uh, Paul Hyde. Hello, sir. Hello. How are you? Really good, thank you. How are you doing? Uh, very well, thank you. Very well. It's a real pleasure to, to speak to you and you must be so much looking forward to, to the annual dinner and, and it'll mean a lot, I'm sure, to be uh, reunited once again with your former teammates. I can't wait. I'm so excited. It's um, uh, it's been 30 years now. I can't believe where 30 years have gone. Um, and uh, I've just really been so so much looking forward to it uh, tomorrow evening. Yeah, really looking forward to it. And especially to be at Adams Park as well, where you've had so many memories. And as I say, to, to be reunited with, with players that you've played with and also the manager as well. Well, quite clearly. I mean, the first time I went to Adams Park was to meet Martin... Uh, uh, prior to signing a contract down there and uh, I met him in the spot bar I think it was at, uh, at the time and um, yeah it was fantastic Martin's you know just an amazing man and, and to meet up with your, your Curries and a few of the other uh, lads that I haven't seen for 20 25 years some of them so consequently it's going to be just a, an epic epic evening for all of us because Andy Kerr's coming from Vancouver, obviously there there are people like Steve Guppy who I don't think can, can make it, but he's quite far away as well. And but it, others, the, you, you know, it'll be so, as you say, so nice to, to get together again. And I'm sure it'll be like you know you've not long been been parted. It it feels like that time does fly, as they say, and it really does feel like that. I mean, um, I still remember kicking every ball in every game. If you were, you know, if anyone wants to talk to me about a game, I will remember that game, and I remember the incidents in it, especially. Uh, if you try not to remind me about the Colchester game, but <laughs> yeah, they they were fantastic days, fantastic um, players, and as a as a, a group of lads, that we're still friends. We still meet up every now and again when we can do when there's not a train strike, and um, it's 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 just been a thirty year dream really, and that was given to me by Martin O'Neill. I mean, because I think if you say 30 years quite quickly, it doesn't feel like that long ago, does it? But obviously, <laughs> it's a lifetime for, for some people. And, well, five years is a lifetime for a, a five-year-old child. But if, if you're, you know, I, I can remember very well, you know, obviously, you know, watching you play and, and some of those games that you've mentioned. And obviously, the, the Wembley games must really stand out for you as well. Well, to play at Wembley was uh, every schoolboy's dream and uh, certainly one of my dreams. And uh, it, it, I, I only... I, I was looking at the medals the other day from playing at Wembley and I was fortunate enough to play there twice and and um, 
sit with Martin on the bench at, on the Leicester game as well against Crystal Palace. And it, but going back, play, playing at Wembley was just a dream to play and to become a professional football um, equally was just a, another dream. It was like uh, I thought I'd missed the chance and um, I, I was late in the career going for it and uh, everything just fell together. Met up with fantastic players great manager, fantastic club, supporters to die for. And, and it was just a roller coaster ride all the way up to Division 1. And it was just unbelievable. Just an unbelievable ride at a fun fair, really. It's just brilliant. Because it's strange, isn't it, looking back? And I guess in a way, almost better, because you couldn't have really predicted how, how it would have panned out. You can't predict anything, no. I mean, um, it only takes a bad bubble, a, a, um, a bad refereeing decision, and things all change. But... I don't know, the resilience of that particular team when we played there, and, and you know, you've had that resilience in other teams with um, other managers as well, and you've had a fantastic run from the past few years, but the resilience of that team and the camaraderie of that team was second to none. I mean, I can't explain how good it was. It was just fantastic, absolutely fantastic. And, and, there, and when people talk to me about my career from non-league going to football league going back into non-league when they talk to me they say what was your what was the high spot there's only one place I'll ever look to talk about and there's only one team I will talk about of, of that and just say Wickham Wanderers gave me my dream and more and it's just been just amazing and talking to people like Matt Crosley and Keith Ryan as well they talk about how you know Martin and really instilled, instilled such great belief and, and that you really believed that you, you were going to win games he did believe it, and I think if you ask any um, <clears throat> any player that played at that time for for Wickham, when we lost, which wasn't that often under the guidance of Martin, when he left the change room, and we all used to look at each other and say, we let the gaffer down. And it was about not winning just for us, it was about winning for that man. and uh, and it, And that's how we looked at the game and that's how we played the game. We played with um, a lot of courage, a lot of belief, a lot of understanding uh, and playing for a, a manager that gave us all the opportunity that he did and the glory that he did in uh, Wickham Wanderers. And goalkeepers are obviously very, very modest uh, people and I'm sure you know you mostly sort of pay tribute to, to the people that were in front of you but obviously to, to, to credit the success that you had. Yeah, modest stuff, yeah. Yeah, I'm... Uh, <laughs> Modest, I'm, I'm not the quietest person in the world, as Martin would always say. You know, if I had a bad game, it's because I was being quiet. But uh, that was only because I wanted to win so much. But being modest, uh, team in front of us, I don't think you'll get better centre half as Matt Crosley. I don't think you get a better skipper than uh, Creaser. And then you can go right through the team from Scotty with his ugly touch to his incredible amount of goals he scored. Uh, Stevie Guppy with his winding, running. Jinks down the wing, Dave Carroll, Steve Thompson. I mean, it was Keith Ryan's energy. Stapes was just just unbelievable. I, I, I could, you can go through all of them, and and it was just an, a fantastic team. Jason Cousins with his flying tackles, it was brilliant. It was just a brilliant, brilliant team, and 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 everyone complimented each other out there. And as well, I think the the sort of the entertaining style of football that was played as well is something that, that fans clearly remember. Well, I mean, I, I go back every now and again and look at the uh, Wembley appearance when we um, won the playoff final against Preston. And again, if you look at the resilience, I mean, uh, the two totally different contrasts of football with under John Beck, uh, a long ball. They scored two uh, two cracking goals, one overhead kick and one and one stooping header. And then, but with, to come back the way we come back and and to score the goals. If you actually look at the uh, the build-up play from the back going right through the middle to the dissection of their team and the, and the finish from your, your strikers Garner and Thompson and was just, and Davy Carroll quite clearly was just incredible absolutely incredible great football great football and obviously the support that the, the team had obviously at Wembley but also you know games at Adams Park and you know being a goalkeeper you were so close to the, the terrace as well and had a great relationship with supporters too I Absolutely loved it. I love coming out for the warm-ups. I like to uh, do a bit of shooting as well. I miss a target a few times and hit a few people. I do apologise. I'm sure but, they're fine um, now. <laughs> um, 
But it, it was it always just a dream to walk out on Adams Park. The pitch was always brilliant. Jim Gardner was amazing, and and what a lovely man he was as well. And and as you walked out, you just felt the buzz. The, the supporters, whether you played good, bad, or indifferent, they were there for you. They just loved to be there. They loved the style of football that Martin uh, had us playing. They loved the characters that were on the pitch and. And to be that close to them, yeah, I became really friendly, quite friendly with them and, and, and not so friendly with the away supporters. <laughs> and a really special relationship, as we touched on, with, with your teammates as well. And the, and the dressing room seemed so close and everyone got on so well. We, we mentioned um, Kim, who we had on the show uh, a few weeks back, you know, saying how, how much of a pal that he was with you. Kim was incredible. He was, inc- he, he was a thorn in our side um, when he was... Uh, it was Cheltenham, wasn't it? Yes, but he was at Cheltenham, and then when he joined us, he was just unbelievably brilliant. I mean, it was just a shame that he broke his collarbone on the post in in the uh, West Brom game. Um, it put him back a little bit, but absolute gentleman. Our Kim was just uh, a, an amazing addition to the team. What a lovely lad. What a lovely bloke. Um, and... And then you had your Timmy Langford as well and everyone. It's just everybody. There's just nothing bad to write about anybody. You know, when Martin brought people in, he wanted a, he wanted a change room that had harmony. And oh my God, did it have harmony. I think that's something that really stands out, isn't it? Because the, the, the spine of the team seemed to you know, not really change that much. But anyone who came in seemed to, seemed to fit so well. They did. Again, it, it, there, there was a... He had just plucked them out of the sky, these players that just came in and they just gelled and and I, I, I think I gave the boys the biggest worry when I turned up because I had a bit of a, a bad boy reputation, but uh, I, I think I quickly cleared that one up, and and uh, Martin's trust was shared with the lads, and um, and then the belief was there, and we just went on to bigger and better things all the time, and it, and it, it was just the change room. No one ever gave anyone grief. You had a captain, Creaser, would always sit there next to you. And if he was having a bad game or a bit of a tough week or if you had a little problem at home or whatever, he would just sit there and just talk to you and talk to you and, and just help you through it. He was just an amazing captain. And I don't think you missed too many games, but there's a good sort of goalkeeping union, wasn't there, with yourself and Chuck as well? Chuck, I, I always said to um, everybody, and I think Martin will agree with this if he's listening, he was a fantastic five-side goalkeeper. He he, um, he dominated a small area, and uh, he had a great character. And his banter in the changing rooms was hilarious. He was one of the funniest lads in the changing room. He he made things happen in the changing room that just eased everybody's um, uh, fears or, or doubts or anything. When Chuck was around, it was a always a fun place to be. And are there any particular kind of saves or occasions that you especially remember that really really stand out that you're especially proud of? My occasions that I was proud of, yeah. On personally, on a personal front, uh, <laughs> just mine. And he'll phoning me up at work one day it was just an amazing. Uh, it was like uh, it went out on the loudspeaker over the town. I had that right and he was on the phone for, uh, phone for us to have a chat and then signing pro for Wickham Wanderers and 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 um, or signing for Wickham Wanderers in the conference was just a massive achievement. Then. I remember beating Sutton away. I had big fears, losing at home to Sutton 3-2 on the uh, first leg. Beating them was the highlight of my life, really, in football. And um, that just, again, from there, winning the league with a Steve Guppy run down the wing, beating, uh, uh, cashing in on a goal from the left wing against Runcorn. There were so many things that happened. Um playing against Coventry. I think the Coventry game, for me, was the best all-round performance that Wickham Wanderers ever put in well, while in my playing time. But my favourite game was, um, was that one and the West Brom FA Cup game. Mm. Um, at the home game, where we played, uh, um, I think, uh, one of the go- first goals could have done a bit better, but then made many saves afterwards that I weren't always given credit from against you, Super Simon Garner and, and, and Co at West Brom and that was a fantastic day out for us. Um, but so many other 
memories. I, I, honestly, I, I could talk to you all night about them. Of course. And it, it seems so easy to take for granted nowadays, but you know, when you see where the club is and obviously having been in the Championship compared to recently, but, but it must have meant so much to, to yourself and the rest of the team, obviously, from, from going from non-league to you know, being professional uh, and, and going into the Football League. Going professional was a big step in my life and it you know, really changed things. I mean, um, we, we had a, 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 a winning the conference, we had a, um, a football tour to Salaraki in, uh, in Greece, on the roads, and uh, we all bonded out there again and everybody decided to sort of like stay along uh, at Wickham and make sacrifices with jobs and everything else. And um, then when we come back for the training ground, it, Totally new development for Martin and all of us at Homer Green and everyone else. We had to sort the training facilities out, which was very raw and sort of bordering and not that professional, but we made it work. And uh, as a team, looking at where Wickham Wanderers are now, they're firmly, firmly in people's thoughts all the time now by getting into the championship. And um, to be quite honest with you, they only needed was it a point to stay up and and the, the amount of points that they lost on the last minute of the game in the first 10 games any one of them wins would have kept them up in the championship that would have been a huge huge ordeal to be in the championship but to survive and be a first division team as long as they've been now is testament to the club and the way they run the, the books and the, the way they run the club now it's fantastic absolutely fantastic and obviously, since since your time, have you always kept an eye out for, on, on on goalkeepers at the club? Because they seem to be so so fortunate to have such high quality uh, men between the sticks. Yeah, yeah, the, the goalkeepers have always been good. I'm, I'm, it's always lovely to be remembered as as uh, a good goalkeeper down at Wickham because um, there is there's so many good goalkeepers down there. They've been fantastic, and I do watch. I mean. Every week, the first result I look for is uh, all the clubs that I've played for in the F- football league, and and I'm always looking out for them. I'm a, I'm a I'm a born and bred Chelsea supporter, but first, Wickham Wanderers is my first team that I look for. And f- football still in the family? Are your son plays as well? Uh, no, not my son. But my my nephew plays. Oh, he plays. Uh, I think he's at Yeovil now, so he's one of our arch enemies of the past. But, <laughs> um, uh, that is from the past, and I'm not sure they'll uh, they'll be part of the present unless we uh, meet them in the FA Cup again. No, absolutely. And these days, uh, you're, you're still um, still active, and, and I guess you're working with young people as well. Um, I, I'm school teacher now. I've been school teaching for 20 years. Um, I still play football. I went out last night, played football. I play uh, only in five so indoor five sides uh, in goal. Um, Stupidly enough, diving around on hard parky floorings and um, still making plenty of saves. The only difference is, whereas I used to hit the floor and get up quick, I hit the floor and it takes me a long time <laughs> to get up. Yeah, so I'm still playing football at, the, at my ripe old age. And going back to the dinner tomorrow, it's so fantastic, isn't it? That you know we've spoken to so many ex-players, and you know as a sport and or as a, as a sort of thing, the, the camaraderie that you have, the experiences that you have with with other players in, in dressing rooms, it seems almost almost unique that you don't get that in other sort of walks of life, really. You don't. It's a very short uh, short um, life football. It's uh, uh, you're, you're lucky if you continue it past ten years. You're lucky if you actually get into it at all, and you're lucky if you win. Top trophies on route. I mean, there's many players out there that haven't had that glory, but possibly a lot more money. But uh, um, it, it's an amazing, it's an amazing thing. I mean, when I look back at my life, I look back and see my children, and and I look back and think about my football and where I was and what I did and what Wickham Wanderers gave me, and and it's always in the back of my mind. It's always there, and if I ever feel a bit down about anything. I go and have a look at my medals. I go and have a look at a bit of a couple of programs. I'll start remembering or get in contact with the lads, and it's just um, yeah, huge part of my life. Huge part of my life. And so nice that it was a springboard for you know, as you say, you got, got to go to Leicester as well, and, and other stuff that you uh, achieved in your career as well. Yeah, I think I. I mean, I um, I came out of football in the end. I went to Leighton Orient in the end. I signed a uh, three-year deal at uh, Leighton Orient from Leicester, and. Uh, Sadly, broke my leg a year after a year, a year and a month after joining them, which was a 
not a pleasant thing uh, by a former Wickham Wanderers player as well, which um, was unfortunate. But um, um, I got back re- rehabilitated. I moved. Uh, I broke away from London and moved down to Kent. And then I, uh, Peter Taylor contacted me to be the goalkeeping coach at Gillingham. So I was a goalkeeping coach for Vince Bartram and Jason Brown. In fact, I took Jason Brown down there. And um, then uh, Dover heard I was down there. And I ended up playing 350 games in the conference for Dover. So, yeah, I, I, I continued it. And then went high, well in, Whitstable. And I think I was about 51. And I played in the FA Cup qualifying rounds. So, yeah, I carried on a career past my football career from Wickham and Leicester and Late Nyan. So, yeah, I've had a full, I think it works about just under 2,000 senior games of football, whether it be pro or semi-pro. And I was going to say, when you, when you were at Wickham, it was, it was the time when, when goalkeeper shirts were predominantly green. But I think you did wear a number of different colours and, and probably have done many more since. Uh, I actually quite quite like the Paisley kit I had. <laughs> that was uh, one of my favourites, but that was one of my favourites. I did like that one, yeah. But uh, it was green, green or green or yellow, wasn't it? But uh, I had a beautiful Paisley kit and uh, uh, the red kit I wore at Wembley for the FA Trophy, if I remember rightly. Uh, I don't remember too much about the playoff because I was really ill that day. I don't remember much of that game, to be quite honest with you. I watched the highlights of it, but... Uh, being involved in that game, I don't, yeah, I'm not really 100% sure on really what happened that day. Uh, uh, but I remember just waking up at the Sockwell House and having a fitness test with Martin. <laughs> he threw two balls and said, you're playing. And that was it. That was a, a done deal. And yeah, and I'm so, so pleased that I did play that game. So, yeah. And just finally, overall, how do you, how do you reflect on your, your time at the club? Reflect on my time at the club. I think I've mentioned it many times. Brilliant, amazing supporters, the club, the management, the players. Uh, and ringing the blues cost me a fortune at the time. Um, <laughs> it was incredible. The newspapers were fantastic. To be quite honest with you, it was easy, palatable writing because the team was such a good team with so many successes behind them. It was always sort of nice reading. And... Uh, um, Obviously, there's always uh, bits in, in football that stick in your mind that ruin your career. We won't get into that one on my front, but uh, Martin leaving was a big part of many great players leaving that club. And um, that's a, that, that was a sad, sad time for many people. But in general, wow, what a club. And I thank Wickham Wanderers very much for my memories. And are you able to put in, into words just you know, what, what, what you think is so special about it? Because I think, you know, speaking to so many players, there's, there's a real kind of uniqueness, isn't there, about it? Well, Wickham isn't, isn't the, the biggest town in the world, is it? I mean, it, it's, it, but it's always been known as a well-supported non-league club. For them to support the team week in and week out, and the travelling supporters were amazing and vocal and colourful. It's a very wholesome town, very honest town, and and... And they just wanted to blend in with, with you. They're just your friends, every one of them. I mean, I can talk to about uh, Paul and Suzanne behind the goal with Mum, uh, Val and, a few, and other people there. that They're just like family members. And there was never any nastiness. It was always just friendly band to friendly people, whether you're in the bar or not. I remember going into the bar on many occasions and if we hadn't played particularly well, there was a crowd of um, supporters in the far corner of the main bar um, that would be waiting for me to come in, sit down <laughs> and put the spotlight on me and grill me why things went wrong. But equally, they were there to pat you on the back and buy you a pint and um, cheer you along. But they liked our honesty. We liked their honesty. And, and I just think, the whole package, the whole harmony was because everybody loved each other. It's a really great message. Uh, so pleased to be able to speak to you. Thank you so much for your time. Do enjoy the, uh, the meal at the ex-players' dinner. I'm very much looking forward to meeting you tomorrow.
No, that'd be fantastic. I can't wait. Thank you very much. Uh, Paul Hyde, former Wickham Wanderers goalkeeper, speaking to us here at Wickham Sound. Online, on Radio Player, and on 106.6 FM. This is Wickham Sound. Final part of this week's Wickham Wanderers show still to come between now and, uh, well, the end. Uh, we'll hear from Matt Bloomfield, the manager who we uh, caught up with a little earlier, earlier on today, uh, ahead of the visit of Reading to Adams Park on Saturday. Uh, lots of other uh, interesting topics to cover with him as well, including the players who've been on international duty and um, some other things. Uh, make sure you don't miss that. Uh, that's coming up uh, very soon. But first, with our focus on Wickham Wanderers women, uh, they were in uh, Bucks and Bucks County Cup action against Abingdon at the weekend. And uh, very pleased they've been chatting to Maddie Armstrong, who is uh, only 17, but um, propelled into the first team with the uh, departure of Cara House. And uh, she's uh, taken up the uh, left-back position, made it her own, and uh, doing very well since her arrival at the club. Since being at the club, I found it really good. It's very, like, family orientated. Everyone gets on really well, makes you feel um, included in everything, really. I feel like my confidence has really increased playing at the club so far. And did it feel really sort of fortuitous, if you like, that, that Cara left and obviously you were able to, to step up into that position? Yes, because I was, I was in the under-23s and my confidence wasn't the best. But when Paul Cole was saying that um, he wanted me to play in the first team, it really increased my confidence. That must have given you such a boost as well, because as you say, was it, did you feel it was a yeah. big, big step up from the under-23s to their first team? Oh yeah, 100%. And were you made to feel really welcome? Yeah. By everyone. And did you feel you settled in really quickly? Or, or was it a bit of a like, ooh, this is, <laughs> this is a bit daunting? No, nah, I feel like I settled in very quickly. Like the, fir- the first training session I had with them, it was like I already knew everyone. Oh, that's really nice. And would you say kind of left back is, is your favoured position? Or, cause I know you've played on the wing as well. Oh, so originally I, was, I started off being a striker when I first started playing football. And then I got moved to centre mid. And centre mid was where I played the majority of my seasons in football. And then the season before coming to Wickham, I got moved to left wing. And then at the end of that season, I also got moved to left back because I didn't have a left back, left footed player. But um, now I'd say it is my favourite position. You've been about a bit, if you'll pardon the expression. But it's, <laughs> it's nice, isn't it? That, a great sort of advert for you, really, that, that you can play in so many different positions. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really good because if ever they need someone to play in a different position, I can always play there. And do you feel you've got that kind of skill set, if you like, to be able to, to slot in literally anyway? So you've played up front and on the wing and midfield and, and now at the back as well? Yeah, I feel comfortable playing in any position. Oh, that's fantastic. And it's great to be able to, to contribute. And I guess, you know, obviously left back, at the, the position's changed quite a bit, hasn't it? They're quite sort of attacking nowadays. Yeah, and that, that's good for me because I'm quite an attacking player. I like attacking. So being able to run up the pitch with the ball, that's another good thing. And you've been on the score sheet already, I understand. That must have felt great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it did. So what's what's your kind of assessment of how the team's doing as well this season? Because it feels a little stop-start recently because you've had some games called off, haven't you? But, but things seem to be going quite well mm. in, in the league and obviously you had that uh, FA Cup run as well. Yeah, yeah. I think the girls, because we all get on quite well as a team and play quite well together and I feel like when we play like a hundred percent, like when we start games playing well, we finish the games really well. And I feel so far this season that's what we've done really well. It's starting strong. And is it really pleasing for you personally as well? And because you say you know your confidence was a little low in the, in the under twenty threes, but it must be great a real boost for you to to be able to be like an established player in the first team now, especially at such a young age. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good. It makes makes you believe in yourself a lot more. Because we spoke to Emily uh, recently as well, and obviously she's about your age too. And but there are you know more experienced players in the side as well that you can I guess sort of call upon or, or learn from their experience as well. Yeah, yeah, especially players like um, Bobby Ash Leachy. They're all players that I look up to a lot. Because I guess as well, you kind of see them and you think, oh, that could be me. You know, in, in a few years, I could be you know, really you know well established and, and doing well, and you're really kind of like learning your craft. I guess at this stage. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Especially looking at how they play and how like how they know the game so well. And what about it's good your own... to learn from them. No, definitely. And what about your own sort of football journey? Is it something that you have you played football since you were very, very young or did you kind of come across it? Um, so I actually came across football in year six. I started playing at lunchtime with the boys. And then it was actually one of the 
parents from my primary school who said to my mum, like, you need to get her in a team. So I just joined my local team, Celtic, in the girls. I think it was under 11s. And then after I moved to Pitts Hanger, I played there for a season. Then I played for QPR, under 13s I played for. And then I moved to Watford. I've played for Hereford United. And then I've played with the QPR reserves and Watford ladies. And I guess you've probably taken different things from, from your time at these different clubs as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. So from from every club I've been to, I've learned a different position. I've learned new things like different skills, like communication, on and off the pitch, everything that's helped me to how I play today. I'm really nice for you to be kind of wanted, if that's the right expression, you know, to be signed for, for Wickham. And yeah. It must be a great uh, time to be joining the club, really, as well, because it feels like it, it's becoming really, really established now. Yeah, yeah. It feels, it's a really professional club and everything seems to be going well. And have you noticed yourself a real increase in the popularity of women's football and, and the growth of it as a sport and, and how much more accessible it is for, for youngsters too? Yeah, even in like our, our cup games, the amount of fans we, we've had come down, like the mascots, and playing in front of the fans just boosts you even more, makes you want to do even better. And we've spoken to some of the other players as well, but I mean, you know, for yourself, obviously you're so young in your, your football career comparatively, but, you know, say there are young girls who, I don't know, like kind of nine, ten, must really look up to you as well for someone who's, you know, doing so well in, like, in the first team, especially at your age. Yeah, I've even been, um, I've been coaching a few younger girls who have wanted me to um, do some sessions with them. So that's good because it means they like what I'm doing. Um, do you set yourself kind of like personal goals and, and goals for the team as well that you'd like to achieve for the remainder of the season? Yeah, so I tend to set myself goals each game. So whether that's making clean tackles for the game, not giving away any silly fouls or penalties, or um, trying new skills in the game, taking on players. Like I always set myself a new goal to do. No, it's fantastic. And do you see, see yourself being a left back for a while now, or are you, are you eyeing up other positions that you might you might like to have a go at? No, I, I see myself as a left back now. I feel like I, I fit in quite good to the position and that I, I know how to play it quite well now. So that's fantastic. I enjoy it. I wish you all the best for the weekend and thank you so much for, for chatting to us and, and have a great rest of your season as well. It's been really nice speaking to you. Thank you. It's nice speaking to you too. Uh, that's Maddie uh, who uh, was um, speaking to us. Uh, and of course, uh, the uh, Abingdon defeat uh, at the weekend, uh, losing 2 1 in the uh, Barks and Bucks Cup and their next action on Sunday against Bournemouth Sports <laughs> away. <laughs> It's like those rail announcements. You know, the, the train <laughs> on platform in. one is coming to a close. Also, I didn't know where Pitts Hanger is. You've it's looked it up, Ealing. though. Ealing. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, nice. Big shout out to Pitts Hanger. The Pitts Hangers, <laughs> as they're known as. Yeah. yeah. Well, have they got any chance? I wonder how they, their chants go. Who are Pitts Hanger <laughs> something something? <That's>, something. <laughs> yeah. I'll work on it. By the Venga boys. Yeah. Um, last part of uh, the Wicked Wanderer show if you've just tuned in there will be a podcast version though available probably tomorrow uh, yes if you're listening to uh, this quite, podcast possibly quite early probably available now um, <laughs> yeah if you're listening to it yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, we, we like to end with a chat with the manager uh, Matt Bloomfield who uh, as, uh, as I'm sure you'll agree has been reaping the benefits of having the game in the uh, well what's now called the Bristol Street Motors Trophy uh, final group game against AFC Wimbledon rescheduled from the Tuesday night at 7 to 12.30 on Saturday it was a, a great idea by me to move the game so I'll take that no I'm joking it was, uh, <laughs> no, I, I, it was been nice just to not have that many week game we obviously we knew we were going to have five players away on international duty so the week was going to be um, disjointed as it was so it was nice to be able to get back on the training ground this week and not have the the boys recovering from a Tuesday night so I thought that last Saturday was very good in terms of giving us that match prep for the players that haven't been playing so much and a couple of the younger boys who I thought really impressed with the way they performed so um, it was a nice way to tick off that final EFL trophy game um, with both teams to you know who already knew that they were going to go through in a competitive environment um, but also gave us some match minutes for the for the boys that needed it really nice for the fans obviously and, and yourself and them of course to have the likes of Joe and Jack back out as well yeah brilliant brilliant you know JJ and, and Jack Grimm are just incredible people have been incredible servants for this football club you know obviously JJ is slightly longer than Jack but two players who you know give so much on the pitch in terms of their performance but also their character and their personality and and it's great to have those two back. Um, I think they're both class individuals and uh, really, really pleased to, to have them back in, in and around it. 
And of course, you say to you every international break, but real sense of pride for the, the club to have those those players out on international duty as well. Yeah, incredible, uh, absolutely incredible. So proud to uh, you know our football club to have five players away on international duty is just incredible. So proud of the boys, you know, to go on away and, and conduct themselves the way they have and perform the way they have. It's fantastic. So uh, yeah, incredibly proud of, of them and. Uh, also, you know, really, really proud and, and, and pleased, I should say, that they've all come back injury-free and, and ready to go this weekend. And do they, in a way, sort of bring things back? I don't mean like sweets, uh, like from, from playing at an international level back, back to the, the club? Yeah, I think, you know, yeah, they come back with a bit of a spring in their step. You know, they've been away, they've been international footballers for, for 12, 10, 10 or 11 days, and, and they come back, you know, Killy scored the other night and Jolo scored in the first game, and they come back with a bit of a spring and other ideas of what they've done and, and maybe with a slight bit of freshness as well because they've been out of the building for, for 10 days so um, it's always lovely to welcome those boys back they've always come back with a smile on their face and, and I think they're all great characters so it's nice to have them back inside the building as, as one of ours And as you say important to have you know, that gap in, in preparation for what's going to be such a big game on Saturday mm, Yeah I think it is it was, it was better for us just to you know, I was really keen for the supporters to, you know, they've missed out on a couple of Saturdays because of the international break to, to move the EFL Trophy game. So it was a great, you know, crowd 600 for a Saturday that, that people could come and watch that game was, was great. And, you know, it was an opportunity where our supporters could go and see a few of the players that we hope will be um, here for a while yet in terms of their development. So, yeah, and then it allowed, allowed us to really concentrate on Reading this week and, and get our preparation right because it's, it's really important that, you know, we've got a really busy run of games coming up, so we need to make sure that we're physically ready to go. And I'm sure you've been asked a lot um, how you sort of view Reading because, you know, they're, they're at the bottom of the table, they've only won three games, but that's not how you kind of associate Reading normally. Yeah, you know, I, lived around, I used to live around the area. Um, I lived in Reading for a few years and in a little village outside, so I know the size of the football club. You know, they're always in the Premier League when I was living around there and they're a big football club with a, a, a really big fan base and a, a proud um, fan base who, who want to see their team in the Championship or Premier League. Unfortunately for them, they're not at this moment in time, but... You know, I thought that their recruitment over the summer, Harvey Nibs, Sam Smith, Wingy, you know, they've signed some really good players there of, of which, you know, we were interested in a couple but couldn't get anywhere near what, what they needed. So we know that they've recruited well, we know they've got some good players and, and their opponent we have to respect. And do you find that teams like that, uh, it sounds a bit of a cliche, doesn't it, but uh, is it a sort of dangerous time to be playing them because they've only won three league games or is it a good time to play them because they've only won three league games? It depends whether you're an optimist or a pessimist, I guess. Um, I think for me it's about making sure that we perform to the levels that we want. Um, you know, we're always going to have an opposition who are trying to do their own thing and is, you know, in League 1 every game is on a a fine balance. You know, you get the odd game where you win heavily or you or you lose fairly heavily and you get so many games in the middle that are on fine margins that that take them one way or another. So we have to be on our game. We have to perform with a an identity and a style that we believe in and that we're proud of. Um, but we also know that we have to be at our best because as I've said earlier on, Reading got some really good senior players and some players that are going to go and have big careers. So we have to be ready for that. And great for fans to see uh, Luke back at the ground uh, on Saturday. And really nice that he's uh, collecting as well for, for what's what's happened to him. Yeah, incredible. I think it just shows the you know the class of the individual. Luke is just a diamond. An incredible signing for us over the summer. Who's you know already given in his short time here so much on and off the pitch in terms of his personality and his character and his you know and his playing ability. Obviously, um, so. Yeah, someone we're really proud of, um, the way he conducts himself, the way he carries himself, and a great shout for him this weekend with with what's going on around the ground. And just finally, really nice that you'll be at the ex-players' dinner this year. You had a, an award last year that Richard Dobson accepted on, on your behalf. It's been quite a 12 months, since, obviously, since then. Yeah, it's, it's, it's incredible to think back, isn't it? And I had a real moral dilemma um, this time last year with... I really wanted to come to the dinner, but obviously I was in the thick of things with my job at, at Colchester and didn't want to disrespect you know, the, the, the perception if I was off back at Wickham when I had a job to do there so unfortunately I had to miss the dinner which I believe was the right thing to do because I, when I'm in a job I'm, I'm all in so yeah so it's lovely to go this year and see some familiar faces and, and be a part of it JDT those guys were trying to be they're trying to make me become an uh, ex-players association member when I was still playing so I'm not sure what hints they were trying to give me for the last 10 years but finally I'm there with them and I'm, I'm really looking forward to it Manager Matt Bloomfield speaking to us a little earlier on um, and really looking forward to seeing him at Adams Park on, uh, on, on tomorrow night uh, and also on Saturday as well to delete the inapplicable as to whenever you're listening to this uh, Would you like a little bit of quick news? Yes, quick uh, news the, the Bristol Street Motors Trophy or the EFL Trophy uh, is being made tomorrow Wickham Wanderers will either face Arsenal Under-21s Bristol Rovers Fulham Under-21s or Oxford United 
probably going to be Oxford. Uh, in the week commencing Monday the 4th of December, uh, the draw will take place uh, on Sky Sports News at 6.30 tomorrow evening. Yeah, as you say, Bristol Rovers and the Bristol Street Motors Trophy would be, be something, wouldn't it? It'd be quite a, it's going to be Oxford, though. We all know it's going to be Oxford. Yeah. It's just our luck, isn't it? A run of Thames Valley games with the, the Reading game on Saturday. Oh, look at you, the Thames Valley games. I like that. Yeah. Oh, nice, yeah, it's good. It should be a little t- tournament we should play, yeah. the Thames Valley games. We should just do that, just just anyway, just in the midweeks. Yeah, yeah. nice. Yeah. Uh, live coverage, of course, from the car park uh, with uh, Wickham Sound. If you're uh, not going to the game, you'll be able to hear, uh, well, all sorts from midday. Yeah, live coverage from uh, three o'clock with Phil from the gantry. Come on, you blues!